Here's all the information we've managed to gather about Grand Theft Auto 6 so far. Dedicated fans have compiled a 60-page document that meticulously covers every new feature revealed in last year's leaks. These features have been officially confirmed by Rockstar Games, as they originate from the footage Rockstar themselves acknowledged as part of Grand Theft Auto 6. Keep in mind that the game is still in development, so some details might evolve. However, as of now, these are the features you can expect to find in the game. If you're interested in delving into the full document, you can find a link in the description. But bear in mind that it's quite an extensive read, so we'll break it down for you. Let's begin by discussing the game engine. Euphoria Physics has undergone adjustments, and improvements have been made to the ragdoll physics and overall game physics compared to GTA V. Additionally, Grand Theft Auto 6 will incorporate lighting and skybox systems similar to those seen in Red Dead Redemption 2. This means you can anticipate enhancements like volumetric clouds and better lighting, which mark a significant leap forward even compared to Red Dead 2. One notable detail from the leaks is the presence of heavy fog, a feature not prominently seen in GTA 5, except for snowy conditions. Advanced weather systems will play a more prominent role in GTA 6, adding depth and immersion to the game world. As for characters, we already have insights into several individuals set to appear in the game. While Jason and Lucia are the main protagonists, the leaks have revealed the existence of other characters. These include Dre, not to be confused with Dr. Dre, Sam, a friend of Dre, Kai Wine Simon, Zach R.B. Shaw, and several others like Vicky, Iris, Shanice, and YJ. It's quite astonishing that we even have details about their heights. Lucia stands at 5 feet 3 inches, while Jason measures 6 feet 1 inch tall. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. Now, back to the video. We've also got details on three different gangs set to make an appearance in Vice City. Sand for Sand, a Haitian gang, the Guardia Brothers, and the far-right militia. Moving on to tools and items, the list is quite extensive. You can expect to find an autodialer, binoculars, immobilizer bypass, a color tool, painkillers, a pool cue, trauma kits, a golf driver, various food and drink items, a golf putter, a USB drive, a golf iron, a crowbar, a golf wedge, a torch, a Slim Jim, a tracker jammer, a duffel bag for stashing your loot, cigarettes, and a backpack, again for storing your loot. When it comes to weaponry, the leaks confirm several options, a rocket launcher, an assault rifle, a baseball bat, a polymer pistol, a knife, a bolt-action sniper rifle, a Molotov cocktail, a spear gun, which is intriguing, a smoke grenade, a compact SMG, a flashbang, a micro SMG, a hunter sniper rifle, a heavy machine gun, an auto rifle, and a pump action shotgun. The weapon wheel system will be divided into three sections, weapons, equipment, and gear. This setup is reminiscent of Red Dead Redemption 2, where you had access to your weapons, items, and horse all in one interface. Notably, we've seen glimpses of the ability to hold different weapons in each hand, and there's an additional quick item inventory in the bottom left corner of your screen. In a video clip, we observed an NPC firing at Jason, and shortly after, we noticed that Jason's health was low. A tip appeared on the left side of the screen, indicating, you were injured, your health will regenerate slowly. Open your weapon wheel and use a recovery item to replenish your health faster. Unlike GTA 5, where your health regenerated only up to 50%, in GTA 6, it seems that you may regenerate to full health naturally, albeit at a sluggish pace. However, if you want to expedite your healing process, you can employ a medical item. We've got confirmation on seven open world activities that will be available in the game. Currently, these activities include dice, golf, fishing, and races. Additionally, there's a van shipment activity, and in one of the videos, you can spot the spawning location for a delivery van event. This location is near the industrial area of Port Gellhorn, and it's noteworthy that there's a warning poster about security cameras in this area, suggesting the need for caution while attempting to rob the van. Now, regarding robberies, if you've seen the leaks, you might remember the Hank's Waffles robbery, which was quite impressive. Jason and Lucia took on the challenge of robbing this massive diner. In another clip, when Jason was entering a store for a robbery, it became apparent that he possessed an ability allowing him to see through walls. The leaks also mention events related to searching vehicle trunks for something valuable, or perhaps finding nothing at all. Moving on, there's another event type called Deliveries mentioned, specific to Port Gellhorn. It's somewhat challenging to predict the exact nature of these events, but that's all the information we have for now. As for enterable buildings, Grand Theft Auto 6 is set to offer more opportunities for exploration. Confirmed locations you can enter include the Malibu Club, a pawn shop, the Jack of Hearts, supermarkets, bars, restaurants, apartments, and laundries. Now, let's discuss multiplayer. In the leaked files, we did come across one multiplayer clip. 
and in the bottom left corner of the screen, it displayed PL2 of 32, indicating that there were two players in the lobby out of a possible 32 slots. This mirrors the setup seen in Red Dead Online and GTA Online. While it's mentioned as 32 slots, it's worth noting that the player count is actually capped at 30, with two additional spots reserved for spectators. While hopes may be for larger lobbies in GTA 6, at least during this testing phase, they were exploring the feasibility of 30 player lobbies. Let's delve into collectibles in the game. During a scene in one of the clubs with Lucia, we can observe a developer placing a cardboard box on the ground. Notably, these boxes appear to be lootable, with a circle icon indicating their interactability. The debug text on this box reads, collectibles underscore car underscore pass, suggesting that these boxes will contain car part collectibles. Furthermore, there's mention of Wyman car parts boxed generic used, which has sparked speculation that players may collect car parts specifically for a character named Wyman. It's inferred that both Jason and Wyman share an interest in classic cars. Moving on, we've got collectible hats. In a video featuring Jason in an apartment, a developer is seen interacting with a hat labeled as an ambient collectible hat in the debug text. This implies that one of the ambient activities in the game will involve gathering various articles of clothing, which adds an intriguing layer to gameplay. Now there's a comprehensive list of brands featured in the game, which I won't read out individually, as many may not be of significant importance to the storyline. Instead, I'll display them on your screen for your reference. Feel free to pause the video if you'd like to take a closer look. Moreover, we have a list of confirmed animals in the game. As of now, the roster includes snakes, seagulls, skunks, raccoons, alligators, boars, wading birds, squirrels, southern leopard frogs, crayfish, lizards, skunk apes, pigeons, opossums, and whales. Keep in mind that this is not an exhaustive list, and there's a good chance we'll encounter even more wildlife when the game officially launches. These are simply the animals we have information on at this point in time. In the ongoing exploration of the forthcoming Grand Theft Auto installment, a plethora of new gameplay mechanics has come to light. These enhancements promise to augment the player experience in a variety of ways, ushering in a fresh layer of dynamism and immersion within the game world. First and foremost, players can now maneuver while ensconced in cover. This feature introduces a newfound level of flexibility during engagements, allowing for more strategic positioning in combat scenarios. Additionally, the ability to assume a prone position, a feature conspicuously absent in previous iterations of the game, adds an exciting dimension to gameplay, affording players the capacity to lie flat on the ground, potentially enhancing stealth and tactical maneuvers. Furthermore, the inclusion of loot bags offers a means to store surplus items, expanding inventory management options. An interesting addition is the capability to both drop and retrieve weapons, affording players greater adaptability in response to evolving circumstances. During intense firefights, a novel underfire animation engages, wherein the player character instinctively shields their face from incoming projectiles, providing a more immersive combat experience. In the aftermath of enduring a severe blow, players are granted the opportunity to enact self-revival, potentially turning the tide of adversity. In aiming down sights, the option to seamlessly switch shoulders grants players a tactical advantage, facilitating improved positioning and target acquisition. Moreover, hand-to-hand -hand combat now includes the ability to execute grabs, diversifying the melee combat mechanics. A noteworthy addition to the game is the implementation of buddy communication, embodied in the buddy comms and buddy ping system. Although specific details remain undisclosed, it is plausible that these features will facilitate coordinated actions between the two main characters, Jason and Lucia. Vehicle combat has witnessed a transformation, as shooting from car windows now entails the complete egress of the player character from the window, enabling full 360-degree firing capabilities, thereby revolutionizing vehicular combat dynamics. The intriguing Eagle Eye system, seemingly exclusive to Jason, allows for a form of wall-penetrating vision, although its applicability to Lucia remains uncertain. Enhancements also extend to interactions with in-game elements. Players will find themselves endowed with a broader range of interactions, such as the capacity to carry bodies, engage in robberies, issue threats, and converse with non-playable characters NPCs, during heists. Moreover, the ability to collect additional items, including beer bottles and cans, enriches the gameplay experience. Shifting the focus to new gameplay systems, one particularly exciting addition is the concept of money laundering. During the Hank's Waffles robbery, an icon associated with the car wash property, 
a washing machine adorned with a dollar sign, has been identified as indicative of money laundering. This suggests that players may have the opportunity to purchase specific types of businesses with the intent of laundering illicit funds in the single-player mode. Moreover, the inclusion of fences introduces a layer of illegal commerce within the game. These fences serve as intermediaries for players to sell illegal items, providing a means to offload contraband and potentially profit from illicit endeavors. The inclusion of hacking mechanics is confirmed to some extent in the game. Lucia is equipped with a set of intriguing tools, including a tracker jammer, immobilizer bypass, USB drive, and an auto dialer. As of now, it remains unconfirmed whether Jason will also have access to these items. Historical leaks from a few years ago hinted that Lucia would be the designated hacker, so the extent of hacking abilities for each character awaits further clarification. Among the event types within the game, two distinct categories emerge, pragmatic cool and chaotic and romantic cool. While specific details surrounding these events are not fully disclosed, they introduce intriguing possibilities for players to navigate. Furthermore, during robberies, players will have the capacity to issue commands to the other character involved. In a video clip from the leaks depicting a robbery, a tip notification suggests checking in with Jason or holding for more options. This implies that players can give their partner commands during a heist. Notably, prompts to instruct Jason to either surrender or follow indicate a degree of control over both characters simultaneously, simplifying coordination compared to relying solely on AI behavior. The witness system and police recognition within the game hold significant implications. During the Hank's Waffle robbery video, an interesting detail surfaces regarding the Wanted Level Stars interface which includes the term full description. This strongly suggests that witnesses within the game possess comprehensive knowledge about the player character. Consequently, law enforcement is expected to recognize the player once Lucia enters a police vehicle. Additionally, a transition is observed from no vehicle description to full vehicle description in response to Lucia's actions. This implies that even after losing a wanted level, if the police spot the player in the same vehicle, they will react accordingly, potentially leading to an arrest or hostile encounter. During the robbery sequence, Jason can be seen actively preventing customers marked with yellow icons above their heads from calling the authorities or fleeing the scene. Notably, an NPC within the diner exhibits a yellow icon above her head. Following Lucia's exit from the diner, the icon begins to flicker. Subsequently, as Lucia approaches a police car surrounded by law enforcement, the icon shifts to red. The female NPC then departs from the diner, making eye contact with Lucia before hastening away. These developments underscore the sophistication of NPC interactions, presenting a notable advancement in the game's artificial intelligence systems. The prospect of item sharing between the characters Jason and Lucia is on the horizon. A notable example emerges from a video clip where Jason pilfers items from containers, opting to retain some while distributing others. This cooperative element extends to the unlocking of doors and gates, exemplified in a video featuring Jason within the Sand for Sand area, which, if you recall, is the moniker of a gang in GTA 6. In this particular clip, Jason stealthily maneuvers past a red truck, revealing a door from an import garage building bearing the descriptor door panel locked in its debug text. In juxtaposition, a gate within the same clip indicates door unlocked, signifying the necessity of unlocking specific access points. Subsequently, we delve into an extensive catalog of new features, commencing with an upgraded AI system. In a visual excerpt, the enemy AI exhibits an inclination to open fire upon Lucia when she pivots to face them. This hints at AI entities possessing a heightened acumen for discerning opportune moments to engage in combat. Impressively, AI units adapt their elevation relative to surrounding obstacles, steering clear of potentially disadvantageous head-glitching tactics. We'll take a look at a recent patent filed by T2 Interactive, the parent company of Rockstar Games, which sheds light on the character creation process within the world of GTA 6. The patent reveals details about a new system developed by Rockstar Games, designed to streamline character creation and leverage the capabilities of current generation consoles more effectively. As game worlds grow in size and complexity, filling them with diverse and compelling characters and environments becomes increasingly challenging. Artists are tasked with creating every individual in-game object, from characters to buildings and interiors. As these worlds expand, the computational and design efforts required also increase. However, Rockstar Games has once again demonstrated innovation by developing a system that optimizes the rendering of 3D objects, ensuring efficiency without compromising on detail. This system addresses the challenges posed by the ever-expanding scope of game worlds. The patent we're examining in this video is titled System and Method for Game Object and Environment Generation. This video takes a deep dive into the generation of building interiors and characters within the expansive world 
being crafted by Rockstar Games. The patent starts off by providing an overview of how objects function within 3D spaces, as explained by Rockstar. Objects used in 3D graphics, often called assets, are a combination of geometry data, for example, the 3D model, and data for textures associated with the geometry data. An asset may be formed of one object, or it may be a composite object made from a combination of objects. The objects that form a composite object may in different contexts be used as independent assets unrelated to the composite object, or they may always be used as a subset of a larger object. They've provided an intro to how 3D objects function in games, aiming to help us grasp the workings of their latest invention. Persons of skill in the art will recognize that many different sorts of assets, such as vehicles, can be made from collections of subcomponents. For example, one aspect of the game might require a room, say a dining room. That entire dining room could be considered one game asset, but it will likely be created from several other assets, such as a table, chairs, dishes, glasses, wallpaper, flooring, etc. The glasses and chairs are independent of the larger dining room asset. As another example, a virtual person in the game, such a background character in a scene, would also be an asset. A person asset might be made up of a number of interchangeable objects, such as legs, a torso, arms, a head, etc. Because the person is made up of interchangeable objects, a variety of different persona sets can be made by mixing and matching different constituent parts. But a body part like a torso might always be used as a subpart of a larger body object. Prior art systems generally include libraries of game assets. The systems and methods of the present disclosure add a metadata layer to these game asset systems and provide modified development and game architectures to take advantage of the new metadata layer. This metadata layer includes tags that are added to the object in order to provide useful descriptors. In a preferred embodiment, these descriptors are completely freeform and without context. This allows developers to specify information about objects as needed without having to be locked into a ridge pre-configured schema. Rockstar's new system introduces an additional metadata layer and utilizes tags for enhanced functionality. In the next section, they provide examples illustrating how this tagging system will operate. For instance, characters and virtual beings within the game world will be assigned tags like skinny, chubby, average, attractive, ugly, young, old, and so on. They explain that this tagging system won't just apply to the 3D models or textures alone, but to the entire object package, which includes the model and its associated textures. Essentially, every aspect of a particular character will be tagged. For example, skin textures for elderly characters will be tagged as old, while arms and torsos for heavier characters will be tagged as chubby. They also list other tag examples provided by Rockstar, such as sporty, hipster, emo, preppy, nerdy, luxury, basic, new, worn out, business, and formal. Moreover, each component can have its own tag, and there can even be collections of assets with tags. Furthermore, they explain that all these assets can be stored on servers for easy developer access via an application programming interface, API. Additionally, these assets can be stored in various formats like XML, limited text, binary encoding, relational databases, and others, depending on the developer's proficiency. The systems and methods of the present disclosure further advantageously use the metadata via a rule set layer that uses the metadata to increase the speed and efficiency of game rendering, world or scene creation, game script execution, and rendering fidelity. In particular, the rule set allows designers to add context to the tags and to control their use by setting rules for the asset usage and the asset's interaction with the game and other objects. These rules are unrestricted and can be used to provide a wide variety of different capabilities and restrictions for objects. Let's take a look at how these tags will be put into action. For instance, if a jacket object is created, a tag like additional top garment can be assigned to it. Then, during gameplay, certain rules might search for this specific tag to identify objects like jackets. Furthermore, in a cold setting, the character's health stat may decrease at a slower rate because the character stays warm with the additional top garment. Moreover, the additional top garment tag could enhance rendering efficiency. For instance, if a character wears a shirt underneath a jacket, the shirt occupies memory space. Since the shirt is mostly covered by the jacket, Rockstar plans to replace the full shirt with a smaller texture, only containing the visible parts under the jacket, thus conserving memory. The combination of tags and the rule set can also be used advantageously for procedural generation of game objects and environments. For example, a game scene could be created in a game script by calling assets based on tags, rather than calling the assets explicitly. For example, 
If the game scene called for virtual characters in a movie theater, the game designer could simply specify a need for predetermined X number of characters with casual dress. If the designer wanted a sci-fi movie playing at the theater, it might also call for a higher percentage than normal of characters tagged nerdy. The metadata rule set interface would interpret these general instructions at game runtime to randomly generate virtual characters fulfilling those needs. Additionally, this system offers increased efficiency. For instance, the entire character object doesn't need to be packaged before streaming to the GPU for processing. Instead, they can be generated directly on the GPU using existing model and texture assets. Of course, Rockstar aims to utilize as many preloaded GPU textures as possible while maintaining a realistic variety in the scene. Moreover, this system allows them to control the number of preloaded textures used in a scene. For instance, more textures can be preloaded for complex scenes and fewer for simpler ones. The goal of this video is to provide an overview of the key aspects of this new system, so I won't delve into every example described in the patent. Turning to the details of the specified metadata, in a particularly advantageous embodiment, the following metadata is included for each model and texture, IDs, property tags, match tags, randomization restrictions, expression data, and optimization data. While this selection of metadata has been found advantageous, different groupings and subsets of these tags can be mixed and matched as needed to accomplish particular design goals without departing from the spirit and advantages of the present disclosed inventions. The uses, embodiments, and benefits of each of these fields are described as follows. These elements constitute the metadata, and while I won't delve into each one individually, they essentially represent the various tagging methods Rockstar employs to organize models and textures. These tags facilitate accurate and efficient filtering and sorting of assets within the virtual world. Our focus centers on a comprehensive analysis of the map's latest updates, incorporating newly unveiled areas and event coordinates derived from leaked information. Additionally, we will explore fresh insights from the initial official trailer, including the revelation of an accessible plaza. A noteworthy aspect we'll be dissecting is the potential expansiveness of the map, hinted at by newfound highway evidence in the trailer. Furthermore, we'll examine a conceptual representation illustrating the potential magnitude of the GTA 6 map. The trailer also provides a glimpse of Starfish Island, a detail we'll thoroughly cover in today's session. Let's initiate our examination by diving into the GTA 6 mapping project. For those not aware, this stands as the most extensive and refined community-driven mapping endeavor, aiming to deduce the GTA 6 map with the utmost accuracy. This endeavor leverages evidence from leaks and the primary official trailer. In our previous map analysis, we scrutinized significant alterations in the Borgorn and Grass Rivers areas, expanding the map to an impressive 18 by 8 kilometers. However, today's exploration will predominantly focus on alterations in the Vice City region. Rumors suggest that the GTA 6 map will encompass three major cities, with Vice City and Borgorn being the identified urban centers so far. Vice City, drawing inspiration from Miami, and Portalhorn, a fusion of Gulf cities in Florida. The speculated third city could possibly be modeled after Orlando or Tampa. Earlier rumors hinted at Yorktown being the third city, approximately aligning with Tampa's location. However, intriguingly, structures observed in leaked material from Portgorn were reminiscent of Panama City. Rockstar appears to amalgamate elements from distinct cities to craft a unique virtual landscape. Turning our attention specifically to Vice City, notable modifications are discernible in the stockyard and crossdown area. While these alterations may not be immediately apparent, a thorough comparison with the prior map iteration reveals notable changes in street layouts for improved connectivity. Building positions, including the relocation of the Jack of Hearts nightclub, featured in leaks and the trailer signify significant shifts. Adjacent structures visible in the trailer's music video shoot scene have undergone subtle rearrangements. A noteworthy addition to the GTA 6 mapping project encompasses events gleaned from leaks, introducing a dynamic layer to our understanding of the evolving landscape. At present, we've pinpointed four events on the map, marked by light blue dots. These events include the missing persons poster at the liquor store, the big cat cage roof at Everyday Art Elephant, and the Everyday Art Sidewalk Creep, all clustered around the Crosstown SL Stockyard area. Meanwhile, there have been notable changes in the Vice River area, with some buildings rearranged and brought closer to the river. The overall shape of this area has also been altered, and a new marina building near the airport has been introduced, based on recent evidence. Another significant alteration concerns the incorporation of Ica and Belleville into Vice City. While their status remains speculative, with their names displayed in red, Ica is purportedly inspired by Alapata, a neighborhood in Miami-Dade, while Belleville draws parallels with Brownsville. Formerly perceived as small towns on the outskirts of Vice City, they're now considered part of the Vicedale neighborhoods, 
following fresh evidence. This reclassification potentially places scenes like the police officer pursuing the overweight individual in the Belleville neighborhood. Furthermore, a notable discovery linked to Tommy Versetti's mansion has surfaced. Star Island's inclusion in the game has been confirmed, evidenced by its appearance behind the Rockstar Games title, and in a scene featuring a bikini-clad woman. This revelation solidifies its status as a game location, with strong ties to the original Starfish Island from GTA Vice City, where Vercetti's estate was situated. The prospect of encountering the mansion in-game, whether as an accessible structure or an abandoned relic, remains uncertain but tantalizing. The mention of Star Island remains speculative, as indicated by its red font, leaving the possibility open for it to be renamed Starfish Island or something else. These developments encapsulate the latest updates to the GTA 6 mapping project. Additionally, let's delve into a Reddit post that has garnered attention. I'm still very intrigued by the prospect. This is a full accessible plaza. The full access plaza featured in the trailer has piqued my curiosity. This snapshot is captured during a scene where Jason and Lucia evade the police momentarily. Positioned on the right side of the frame is a sign, presumably denoting a mall within the game. Notably, several brand names, including Kowalski, Kalis, Scala, and Alpha, are visible on this sign. Furthermore, a portion of the mauled name briefly appears, starting with Ever. Could it be Evergreen Plaza or another variation? The answer remains elusive, and we'll have to await further developments to unravel this mystery. I can pretty much bet on it that this shit will indeed be fully accessible. Most of the signs on that structure look to be clothing and accessory shops, which would easily mean it's accessible to us. I'm really hoping the mall makes a return in this one, and will serve kind of as a player hub when online drops. Oh, that would be good. Maybe a spot where you can't attack. Could meet people to join up for races, heists, etc. That would be pretty neat. Now let's shift our focus to some additional findings that might provide evidence for the existence of the third major city in GTA 6. Furthermore, we'll explore why the actual map size of GTA 6 could potentially surpass the estimations derived from the mapping project. Possible map length. Since we don't know what's in the northern part of the map, and we're not sure if it ends where the current mapping project suggests, I thought the map could look something like this. I get that a map like this might be three, four times bigger than GTA 5, so it could be a lot, but we can't be sure about Rockstar's plans. I also think so, because on the east coast of the current map, we have Vice City's predicted beach areas going almost to the very top. Kind of feels like the map shouldn't just end there. And if Port Gellhorn is based on Fort Myers, then maybe Tampa and Orlando could be there too. But with the current borders, there's not enough space even for a small town. Also, shaped like this, the map would resemble actual Florida more. What do you think? Now, here's something to ponder. If the map indeed resembles this depiction, it would be quite astonishing. It's intriguing how the leaks have remained silent about the northern portion of the map. I'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comments. How far north do you speculate the map extends? Do you reckon it's just slightly beyond what's revealed in the mapping project? Or could there be a substantial unseen territory? Shifting gears, let's Let's delve into a significant discovery. An observation on the size of the map using highway exits as a guide. I believe that two blink and you'll miss them shots from the trailer, combined with something I saw in the leaks, have given us a serious hint as to just how big the map for GTA V said might turn out to be, specifically north-south. The first is the shot of the man grabbing his crotch while stopped on the side of the highway, specifically the highway exit signs in the background. They suggest that this shot is being taken from just north of exit 14 on the highway, if turning left has you going east and turning right has you going west. What's more, the GTA VSI mapping project believes that the highway that this shot is taken from is Interstate 97. Adding to this, there's this shot from earlier in the trailer of the woman in the gold dress, hanging out the top of a convertible traveling down I-404, heading towards a junction with 197. At the very start of that clip, you can catch the exit number on the sign she's driving under. You can't see all of it, but to me, it looks more like exit 18 than exit 1B. This one is more speculative though. Now, I'm about to get into the leaks, so I can't post any pictures. There's a clip in the leaks of a red ute heading northbound on 1, 97 towards the exit 13 AB junction that takes one to Washington Beach and Ekanfinaka before crashing. The mapping project has been using the leaks to create their maps, and they've placed that stretch of 1, 97 north of Mr. Crotch Grab from the trailer, running through the stockyard neighborhood. This to me indicates that the highway exits are going to follow a realistic number pattern, with the number increasing or decreasing 
decreasing for every mile traveled. The question is, where does this put exit 12? Exit 11? All the exits going up to 1? I've taken the latest version of the mapping project's map and pointed out where exits 14 and 13 are located. Then, extrapolating from there and using the map's grid as a handy guide, I drew where all the exits further down the numbering scheme might be located. I ran out of room to put exit numbers at hash 9. If 1, 97 is going to keep following the same numbering scheme all the way north until it hits exit 1, then it's likely that the map is going to be far bigger than we currently think it is, and what's been shown and plotted out so far. In fact, I think the only reason nothing's been plotted up there so far is because so much so far has focused on Vice City and its environs. One, 4042 could wind up running just as far north, allowing for a few extra miles and exit numbers to accommodate it crossing the Everglades grass rivers before turning north, as I-75 in real life does. Bottom line, the map for this game is going to be enormous. There's been some chatter among you all about another potential scenario. The possibility of I-97 serving as a loop highway encircling the map's perimeter, similar to GTA 5. While this is a valid consideration, I've largely dismissed it due to a straightforward reason. As previously mentioned, I-44 boasts exit numbers and highway markers that suggest its considerable length, likely extending westward until it reaches the Gulf of Mexico before veering north, mimicking the real-life trajectory of I-75. If the map's northern boundary remains close to its current cutoff point and I-97 extends west and south extensively, then it's plausible that I-44 would mirror this pattern in the opposite direction. While the notion of two loop highways isn't entirely implausible, it could potentially introduce redundancy. Additionally, in GTA 5, the loop highway wasn't simply labeled under one name. The segment along the coast was dubbed the Great Ocean Highway, while the inland stretch traversing the desert was referred to as the Sonora Freeway. Moreover, within Los Santos, various freeways possessed distinct names and numbers, even when merging seamlessly, such as the Del Perro, La Puerta, and La Mesa freeways. My hypothesis currently is that there is a loop highway, but that one, 97 and I-404, are two halves of it. They both start in Vice City and intersect in Crosstown. One, 97 runs up the Atlantic coast. One, 404 runs west through the Grass Rivers, and then turns north to run up the Gulf Coast, and they both meet at a point further north. Whether that point is a city, a smaller town, or something else, that is still unknown. Feel free to drop your thoughts in the comments regarding everything covered in today's video, particularly this astonishing discovery. There's substantial evidence hinting at a larger map size, but I'm eager to hear your input. Alright, so in the GTA 6 trailer, there's this moment where this girl in a white bikini gets everyone talking, debating whether she's Lucia or not. She's chilling near this pool, taking in the Vice City skyline, and then she turns around. And let me tell you, there's a bunch of stuff to unpack there. Her hair moves all natural-like, swinging around as she turns. She's got these big hoop earrings, cool purple sunglasses, rocking a purple lipstick, and check out those nails, French tips. Oh, and there's this bracelet on her left wrist that catches the eye too. Now, here's the deal. Some folks are saying, nah, there is absolutely no way that is Lucia, or it just doesn't cross anyone's mind. Their argument? She looks different from how Lucia appeared in other shots, especially in that jumpsuit, and during the whole crime spree with Jason. But hold up, there's a good chance that in GTA Online, customization's gonna be off the charts. Need a different haircut? No biggie, just swing by the in-game salon problem solved, so who knows? This bikini girl might just be a customized version of Lucia with a whole new look and vibe. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. Now, back to the video. You know, I'm pretty confident that it won't cause much trouble, just like in GTA 5 or Red Dead Redemption 2. It feels like they'll let us switch up our characters' hairstyles again, which is pretty cool. Now, about this scene, it looks like it's happening at a totally different stage of the game. At the start, Lucia's all locked up in jail, doing those petty crimes and all. But in this snippet, she's looking like she's hit the jackpot. Loads of success and riches. There's more to this in the trailer, giving us a peek into what a thriving Lucia might look like. She's sporting a different hairstyle, dressed to the nines, hanging out in a fancy car with Jason behind the wheel. And to top it off, the girl's getting her photos taken by the paparazzi. Some folks out there are betting that this bikini girl is gonna be the face of Rockstar's marketing strategy. You know, just like how they've always had that iconic female figure in their marketing since the good old days of GTA 3. So, putting it all together, it really seems like this bikini girl is Lucia. From the style to the little details like the various hairstyles, everything seems to point in that direction. It's exciting to get these glimpses of what Lucia's different phases might look like in the game. Rockstar's been doing this thing with the promo girls for ages, from the early days of GTA 3 to the more recent GTA 5. You might remember them. 
The girl in the bikini holding the martini glass, or the San Andreas girl leaning over at the Vinewood sign with those shades. They've always had these distinctive figures for their marketing. A bunch of people are pointing fingers at this bikini girl, saying she's the new rock star promo face. But I've got my money on Lucia. Take a look at those birthmarks and accessories, those little marks on her face and arm. They're pretty similar to what the bikini girls got. Sure, some aren't super clear, but makeup or sun exposure could easily cover them up. And those earrings and bracelets? They match up pretty well with all the girls who look like Lucia, even if some shots might leave room for doubt? Like the one where she's driving that fancy car. I'm pretty convinced it's Lucia. Jason's checking her out. The accessories are a close match, and her facial structure lines up. Not to mention, her body shape, facial features, skin tone, hair length, and color? Pretty much all of it lines up perfectly. In that scene, the way the bikini girl moves seems a bit forced, like she's intentionally flipping her hair or something. So maybe it's part of a mission, Lucia trying to blend in at some event to gather info, or pull off a heist. Or perhaps it's one of those moments where she's at the top of her game, all success and loaded. Oh, and that bikini she's wearing? It's from the Santino brand, which first showed up in GTA 5. So, in GTA Online, we've got this whole range of clothing options, right? There are jackets, shoes, and some of them even parody luxury brands like Louis Vuitton, which is a real high-end clothing and accessories label. Now, some people are throwing around this theory that the bikini girl might be a returning character from the old GTA Vice City like Mercedes Cortez. But honestly, that's way off. Vice City was set in the 80s, and GTA 6 is gonna be in the present. Like, probably around 2023. So the timelines just don't add up. Even though this bikini girl looks a bit different and acts a bit like an influencer, I'm pretty convinced she's Lucia. She's got those same body features and face structure as Lucia. And Lucia's a game changer as the first leading lady in modern Rockstar games. Before her, female characters mostly played supporting roles or were just NPCs in GTA games, never the main focus. Rockstar tends to put a lot of effort into their main characters. The little differences like the sunglasses or lipstick don't bother me much. We know there'll be in game stuff you can buy, like accessories. And hey, being able to change hairstyles was a big deal in games like Red Dead Redemption 2 and GTA 5. So I'm pretty confident that the girl in that white bikini on that Vice City rooftop is Lucia. But yeah, I get it, there's gonna be a lot of chatter and debate. Remember the crazy theories from past GTA trailers? Like people saying the homeless guy was Nico Bellic? Or that Michael was an older Tommy Versetti? It's always possible I might be wrong. But to me, it all seems to point to Lucia here. GTA 6 has been announced, and it's caused a whole bunch of rumors to swirl around. We've got a list of stuff that's actually confirmed for the game, so let's dive in. Now, the game isn't coming out anytime soon. Rockstar Games is still working hard on it. But thanks to some leaks, we've got some inside info on what to expect. We're talking vehicles, game physics, and the main characters, Lucia and Jason. Plus, we've got details on the map, the huge open world, activities, and all the weapons you can play with. There's also a bunch of cool stuff going on with NPC AI, RPG elements, and some new gameplay features. People are pretty hyped about all this, and they're chatting up a storm about what GTA 6 is going to be like. Now let's check out the vehicles in the game. The GTA forums did a solid job gathering this info, so shout out to them. So we've got confirmed vehicles like the Blista Compact, Ocelot Locust, and something that looks like a 90s Buick Skylark. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. Now, back to the video. There are a bunch of other cars too, without official names, like a 90s Chevy Caprice, a 2016, present Chevy Malibu, a Chevy Sonic, and a 2018 to 2022 Honda Accord. Rockstar usually gives these cars funny names. Other rides include the Albany Primo, Benefactor Shafter LWB, something that's like a mix of Ford Explorer and Tahoe from the 90s or 2000s, a 2018, present Toyota or RAV4, with Lexus NX vibes and a Mercedes grille, the Pegasi Tauros, a 1980s Jeep CJA Scrambler, a 5th gen F150, a G20 conversion van, a Brute Camper, a Vapid Speedo, H5 Mixer, Metro Mover, D-Class Sheriff SUV, Mobatsu Sanchez Livery, Nagasaki Street Blazer, a 1970s Ford Ranchero, a 1971 Buick Estate, an Albany Emperor, D-Class Turbo Sabre, Yoga Classic, The Contender, and Saddler. And don't forget the Slam Van Pickup, Bobcat XL, an updated Regina, Alpha, Gauntlet Classic, Moonbeam Helion, Boxville Go Postal, an unknown Albany car that's based on a 1959-60 Cadillac, a Rebel, some Asian sedan, Ferrasi or Ferroci, Baller, Novak, Buffalo STX, Alpha and Fudo, a Benson, NF890, Buffalo with no sports bumper, and the Stanier and Landstalker. With all these vehicles, GTA 6 is going to be quite the ride. Now let's talk about some gameplay clips making the rounds on social media. They give us a sneak peek at missions and what Rockstar is up to. 
One clip shows Lucia, our main character, trying to rob a place called Hank's Waffles, a diner. In this early test, the non-player characters look kinda generic and are jokingly called dummies in the game. The NPCs react to Lucia's aggressive moves, and their animations show they're pretty freaked out, kind of like what we saw in Red Dead Redemption 2. During the robbery, Lucia can aim her gun at a hostage, giving you the choice to rob or have a face-off. Taking a hostage adds some spice to the crime. Jason, the other protagonist, is there too, and you can interact with both characters during the heist. Jason pushes Lucia to hurry up and make a clean getaway, hinting at a Bonnie and Clyde-style partnership, which lines up with earlier leaks about the game's story. People are even saying that Lucia and Jason look like Eva Mendes and Ryan Gosling from the Place Beyond the Pines movie, but we're not sure if the game's story will follow a similar path. Lucia and Jason look like they're in their late 20s. You can switch between them in the game using the controller's D-pad. When the cops show up, Lucia can threaten another hostage, and it leads to a face-off with the police outside. The outdoor area looks like it's inspired by Northern Florida with all the greenery. While trying to escape, Lucia and Jason rack up two wanted stars, but instead of a shootout, they skillfully maneuver through parked cars and hijack a police cruiser. You can tell it's an early part of the game from the tutorial-like prompts, including one about the police getting smarter and remembering cars involved in crimes. The clip ends with Lucia driving off in the stolen police car, and Jason assures her they can shake the cops. But their getaway ends with an accidental crash at an old car wash. In the next mission, Jason and Lucia hit up a strip club called Jack of Hearts and run into Dre, who's chatting with another lady. Dre talks about his music dreams and hints at someone named Boopy. During this chat, we get messages from two new contacts, Billy and R.B. Shaw, through a WhatsApp parody. The early footage shows a mini-map that looks like the one in GTA V, with icons that probably stand for missions from characters labeled WM and YJ. As they head up to the VIP second floor, Dre has a run-in with DJ Tip, who's upset about waiting for drinks. Dre steps in, but it's clear that Tip is isn't the most popular guy, Dre moves on. And that's where the clip ends. Just remember, this is early development footage, and things might change as the game gets closer to release. Another leak spills the beans on more than 500 world events, encounters, and easter eggs you'll come across while playing. There's too much to cover, but I'll mention a few interesting ones. You'll find stuff like missing tourists, yard sales with new clothes, an event that's a bit like the insurance fraud thing in Saints Row, a voice in the storm drain that might remind you of Pennywise a Bonnie and Clyde mystery that spans different places, and a workout challenge that suggests fitness activities are back. Players can also stumble upon an island camp, DUI tests, UFO sightings, an animal house, a swamp safari, and even the possibility of playing some crazy golf. There's a hint that the basketball court might be back too. Events like fishing, Satanist houses, backyard wrestling rings, and mansions with big cats offer a bunch of different experiences in the game world. Now, let's talk about the main locations in Grand Theft Auto 6. Ambrosia has Ambrosia Farms and the Tarmac. Bayside Copperhead, the Everglades or Grass Rivers, Fairyland and Fairyland Forest offer different environments. The Keys region includes places like East Key, Low Key, and spots like a garage, gas station, and liquor store. Lake Okeechobee has a motel, prison, and racetrack, while Little Haiti, North Beach, and North Miami come with places like gas stations, hideouts, and liquor stores. Port Gellhorn offers a variety of spots to explore, like an abandoned building, basketball court, beach, bingo hall, bowling alley, car wash, fishing store, fruit stand, gas station, motel, pawn shop, police station, quick shop, raceway, soccer field, and trailer park. Red Hill has a forest, South Beach features a boardwalk, gym, hotel, ocean drive and park. South Miami Sundown includes a beach and tarmac, and Vice Beach covers Vice City suburbs and Washington Beach. There are also other interesting places like an abandoned hotel, observatory, fountain of youth, homeless community, Malibu Club, Monument of Leonida, Redneck Yacht Club, Spaceship House, Underwater Research Facility, and Dinosaur World. According to info from the GTA forums, Grand Theft Auto 6's open world is estimated to be at least two and a half times the size of GTA 5 ES, giving players a massive world to explore. The game seems to take cues from the successful approach in Red Dead Redemption 2 a well-designed open world with intriguing mysteries. We've spotted some real-life Florida locations in GTA 6's development footage, like the Homestead Miami Speedway turned into the Port Gellhorn racetrack, and recognizable places such as Portofino Tower, Sombrero Key Light, Solar Amphitheater Bayfront Park, and Lone Depot Park. Even the 1000 Museum, a high-rise condo in Miami, is in the game, showing Rockstar's attention to detail. A metro map that's a match for Miami's real one suggests a deep immersion in the game world. The lush landscapes and greenery might hint at a move into Georgia 
Georgia, but that's just speculation until we get official word. Details like the Vice City Neighborhood Police Department resembling the Miami Beach Police Department show Rockstar's creativity and world design. As always, we're waiting for official announcements to see how all these elements come together in the final game. Until then, the mystery of Grand Theft Auto 6 keeps fans excited. There's a recent leak suggesting that Alexandra Christina Ekavari could be the voice behind Lucia in Grand Theft Auto 6. Her voice from a demo reel seems to match up with Lucia's leaked dialogue. We've covered a ton of info about Grand Theft Auto 6, from gameplay details to new features. It's important to remember that the game might still be a couple of years away from release, so we'll have to be patient. Now, let's dig into some interesting findings from the leaked clips. We see Jason and his pals hanging out by an in-ground pool in a lower-income neighborhood, cracking jokes about a parody of social media called Life Invader. It's all about brain downloading and poking fun at Jay Norris's demise, classic Grand Theft Auto humor. The leaked clips also give us a peek into early police AI testing, showing NPCs using cover better during gunfights. In one scene, Jason robs a diner worker with an assault rifle, and we see some dialogue options that look like they're from Red Dead Redemption 2, but they might just be placeholders. Jason's new ability to go prone is a fresh addition to the franchise, and a scene in a thrift or antique shop hints at the option for robbery, maybe even a place to sell stolen items, which adds depth to the gameplay. There are animation tests for Lucia and Jason, doing stuff like jogging, stopping, and ducking to avoid gunfire. Rockstar's developers also tested vehicle crashing physics, with a car driving over an overpass. Highway signs mention North Beaches and Lake Leonida on Inter State 97, with the current exit leading to Washington Beach. In another scene, Jason stumbles upon a shipping container full of cash and a motorbike. Various development clips show changes to the inside of a vehicle, suggesting new vehicle designs or customization options for players. Throughout the clips, there are various interactions with NPCs in the open world, like characters taking selfies, which makes the game's world feel more immersive. Another mechanic borrowed from Red Dead Redemption 2 is the ability for characters to pick up and carry bodies, adding depth to the gameplay. We also see other influences from Red Dead Redemption 2 in different aspects of the game. The weapon wheel system is similar to Red Dead Redemption 2 with limited weapons and items you can carry. Lucia has a loot bag that might be used for robberies or stealing stuff from different places. The inventory system lets players hang on to health kits and other items for temporary buffs, and Jason can pick up and drop weapons from his inventory. In one scene, Jason enters a gang member's territory and takes cover behind a truck, and we see unique animations for characters reacting to getting shot. There's a mention of a jetpack that was previously leaked by Tom Henderson, and it's inside the Jack of Hearts Club. The game includes parody logos for social media like Snapchat, Instagram, and Life Invader. Characters have different hairstyles, and there are realistic details, like Lucia's bra showing under her shirt, which adds to the game game's realism. A new feature is the ability for players and NPCs to hold their guns sideways, which changes things up in combat. We also see Jason doing some fancy rifle tricks in the air, and another character in a parking lot shoots at him while holding his pistol sideways. The clips mention animations like Overdose, which hints at unique actions or events in the game. There are hints of horses and horse riding mechanics, likely inspired by Red Dead Redemption 2. The open world is packed with places to explore, like motels, metro stations, restaurants, pawn shops, and supermarkets. Small details like being able to get a gumball from a quick shop machine add to the overall experience. The game adds RPG elements, like managing food, drinks, sweat, fatigue, and even taming animals, which gives players a deeper gameplay experience. There are references to mountain bike ramps and city bike rentals, promising fun cycling activities. The leaked clips talk about loads of weapons, from regular firearms like pistols, shotguns, and rifles, to unusual ones like golf clubs, baseball bats, and crowbars. Players can also use tools like flashlights, binoculars, and lock picks. Players can stay in motels and hotels, with the Kington Hotel as one option. There's even a pool party with live music for players to attend. References to the Everglades and wildlife like alligators, snakes, raccoons, and birds hint at diverse and unique environments to explore. A cool addition is the ability to shoot while swimming, which adds a new twist to combat situations. When we talk about the positive aspects of this partnership, it's essential to highlight the potential benefits that can emerge from Rockstar's newfound support for the modding community. One of the significant upsides is the acknowledgement of the brilliant and skilled developers behind the modding scene. For years, these developers have worked tirelessly to create unique and engaging experiences within the GTA universe. With Rockstar stepping into a collaborative space with CFX, there's an opportunity for a more symbiotic relationship. The infusion of official support could mean more resources, tools, and encouragement for modders to continue pushing the boundaries of what's possible within the GTA ecosystem. This collaboration might lead to innovative gameplay features, improved server stability, and an overall better experience for both players and content creators. Moreover, the recognition from a gaming giant like Rockstar could open doors for these modders in the industry. It may pave the way for potential collaborations, official partnerships, 
or even job opportunities within the gaming development sphere. This, in turn, could elevate the modding community to a more prominent and respected position within the gaming landscape. However, it's crucial to approach these potential benefits with cautious optimism. While the partnership appears promising on the surface, the reality lies in how Rockstar manages the delicate balance between maintaining control over its intellectual property and allowing creative freedom for the modding community. The outcome will heavily depend on Rockstar's willingness to foster collaboration, rather than imposing strict regulations. As GTA 6 draws closer, the impact of this collaboration will become more apparent. Whether it becomes a model for future partnerships between game developers and modders, or encounters challenges that hinder its success remains to be seen. The dynamics between Rockstar and the modding community could shape the future landscape of custom servers, roleplay experiences, and the overall modding scene in the gaming world. Stay tuned as we continue to explore and analyze the evolving relationship between Rockstar and the modding community. On the positive side, there's a glimmer of hope that Rockstar's acknowledgement of mods enhancing the player experience could pave the way for more modding support in GTA 6. This shift in perspective might lead to a more collaborative environment where modders can contribute to the game's richness without fear of stringent restrictions. With Rockstar officially and financially supporting 5M, the CFX team gains more resources to elevate the GTA 6 server. This could mean a server even more impressive than the ones they currently run. The fact that 5M is now a Rockstar Games product suggests a vested interest in its success, promising additional funding and manpower to ensure its flourishing. An intriguing prospect emerges concerning the accessibility of custom servers. Currently limited to PC players, there's speculation that GTA 6 might integrate dedicated servers within the game itself, eliminating the need for external programs like 5M. If this unfolds, it opens the door for console players to join the custom server experience, broadening the player base and community. Moreover, Rockstar seems to be attuned to fan desires. Despite a larger audience watching RP compared to those actively playing it, Rockstar appears committed to making improvements. Their intent to let custom servers thrive suggests a more fan-centric approach, acknowledging and catering to the desires of the gaming community. However, there are potential pitfalls to consider. The most glaring concern is Rockstar's inclination to monetize these servers. While the specifics remain uncertain, it's almost certain that some form of monetization, be it through custom server shark cards or a pay-to-play system, will be implemented. This could introduce a paywall, affecting the accessibility and enjoyment of custom servers for certain players. As we navigate through this evolving landscape of Rockstar's partnership with 5M, the delicate balance between fostering creativity and implementing monetization strategies will determine the ultimate impact on the gaming community. Stay tuned as we continue to unravel the complexities of this collaboration and its implications for GTA 6 and the modding community. Let's unpack this a bit more. The whole monetization story got its moment in the spotlight during an earnings report where Take-Two CEO Strauss Zelnick spilled the beans. He essentially said, if folks are messing around with our intellectual property, why not make a buck or two? It's a straightforward business move, really. Taking a page from the unprecedented success of GTA Online, it seems like Rockstar caught a glimpse of how these free servers could turn into a money-making machine. Now the potential downside of this situation lies in the realm of competition. Rockstar's got its A-team working on the custom server's gig. That means anyone outside the Rockstar circle trying to whip up something akin to 5M is practically painting a target on themselves for a cease and desist. Let's face it, Rockstar might have eyed this strategic move with 5M from the get-go. However, with those servers gaining crazy popularity and the game becoming a sensation on Twitch and YouTube, shutting it down wouldn't have been the smart play. Instead, they pulled off a masterstroke, acquiring the team behind the biggest servers, effectively cornering the market and positioning themselves to profit from any potential imitators. Now, with GTA 6 on the horizon and servers in the works, Rockstar's sitting pretty. Some in the gaming community are even giving them a nod for finally throwing a bone to the community. But, and there's always a but, at the end of the day, Rockstar's the one making the rules. We'll all have to toe the line because, quite frankly, there won't be any other alternatives in the neighborhood. So, buckle up for Rockstar's GTA roleplay. It's going to be a wild ride. The landscape has already witnessed the repercussions, with servers and mods being handed the shutdown ticket for not playing by Rockstar's latest rulebook. The new mandates include a strict no to real-life vehicles, mission mods, and porting old Rockstar maps or assets rules that weren't in the playbook just a couple of years back. Now, while the financial backing from a mega corporation might seem like a savvy move on the surface, there's a lingering skepticism about whether it'll blossom into the fairy tale 
ending we've all been envisioning. It's a bit premature to slap a final verdict on the fate of 5M once GTA 6 hits the stage. Now, let's consider the potential repercussions for the vibrant RP community. While the partnership between Rockstar and 5M could bring about positive changes, there's an underlying worry within the RP enthusiasts. The fear is that with increased control and potential monetization, the organic and immersive RP experiences that players have come to love might face disruptions. RP communities thrive on creativity, flexibility, and a sense of autonomy. If Rockstar's influence leads to more rigid guidelines, it could alter the dynamic of these communities, potentially affecting the unique narratives and interactions that make RP servers so engaging. As we contemplate the potential impact, it's essential to look beyond the immediate horizon of GTA 6. The dynamics established through this collaboration could set a precedent for future interactions between gaming giants and modding communities across various games. Whether it becomes a model to be emulated or a cautionary tale will be closely watched by both players and industry stakeholders. The future of 5M and the broader modding community remains uncertain as GTA six inches closer to release. While concerns exist, there's also room for hope. The collaboration might lead to a harmonious blend of official support and community-driven creativity, enhancing the gaming experience for everyone involved. As players, content creators, and modders navigate this uncharted territory, the one constant is the love for the game and the shared hope for a positive evolution in the gaming landscape. Taking a stroll down memory lane, Rockstar's track record with monetization doesn't exactly calm the nerves. Add to that the current scenario where they're laying down the law for the CFX team, dictating what's permissible and what's not. This conjures up a cloud of uncertainty regarding the future of both 5M servers and the broader modding community. Personally, I'm a big fan of RP servers and that immersive content. It's my cup of tea. The idea that the same company that set the stage with GTA 5 might potentially tarnish 5M, turning it into a monetized maze with no alternatives, that's a bit of a buzzkill. From 2022 and onward, a group of passionate GTA fans have been diving deep into GTA 6 gameplay leaks, and what they discovered was wild. Their mission? They're trying to map out the entire landscape of GTA 6 before Rockstar Games even releases the official game. And guess what? They're actually making some serious headway. This is all about the ongoing GTA 6 mapping project. So how did this whole endeavor start anyway? It's an interesting story that not many folks are aware of. You see, there was a similar craze back when GTA 5 was announced. Back in 2011, a group of dedicated fans took it upon themselves to predict and sketch out the layout of GTA 5's terrain. How did they do this? By meticulously analyzing every single trailer that Rockstar Games dropped in the year leading up to the game's eventual release in 2013. The surprising part? When the game finally hit the shelves, a substantial chunk of what these fans had mapped out turned out to be surprisingly accurate. Sure, there were a few locations that were a bit inaccurate, like the military base being off and the dam placed in the wrong spot. Also, there were some variations in the overall shape of San Andreas, but considering they solely relied on Rockstar's official footage and had put in two years of work, their accuracy was pretty commendable. Now imagine this, if they could pull off that level of detail with just the trailers, think about what these enthusiasts could achieve with the leaked, under the radar stuff that slipped out prematurely. Plus, add in an extra year of combing through details and data. This mapping project is being led by a user called Dupzor, who is the project manager of this whole thing. On September 18th, 2022, when a massive leak dropped over 90 minutes of GTA 6 footage, the map enthusiasts went into full gear. While I can't exactly showcase the leaked content here, what really sparked the interest of the community were the coordinates embedded within the developer's HUD. These sneaky numbers revealed the exact whereabouts of the player concerning the game map. And let me tell you, GTA 6 fans wasted no time diving into this goldmine of information. With these coordinates in hand, the community went Sherlock Holmes mode, meticulously mapping out the game's terrain and identifying key locations. For instance, in one intriguing clip from the leaks, Lucia and Jason were caught in the act, robbing what seemed to be a Waffle House. This incident was marked by a simple white dot on their evolving map project. But it wasn't just a random dot, it was a significant clue. By cross-referencing the coordinates provided in this clip with other glimpses from the leaked footage, they managed to calculate the spatial relationships between different spots showcased in the leaks. This detective work allowed them to gauge distances and plot out the relative positioning of these places within the game world. However, it didn't stop there. The community didn't solely rely on leaked footage, they combined their detective skills with the official trailer, and using a blend of educated guesses and hard data, 
endeavored to include every conceivable road, building, and landmark featured in the GTA 6 map. The goal? To create a comprehensive and accurate representation of the game's virtual world based on all available tidbits of information. It's a fascinating process that demonstrates the dedication and passion of gaming communities in piecing together the puzzle of what to expect in GTA 6. Since the leaks hit, the GTA community has been on a mission, working tirelessly to piece together the game's map. Their focus has mainly been on sketching out the main areas, the cities, towns, and key landmarks. It's been quite a collective effort, with everyone trying to contribute and fill in the blanks based on whatever clues they could find. Then, the trailer dropped, and it was a whole new ball game. Among all the fast cars and flashy scenes, Rockstar slipped in a subtle surprise for the observant fans. After a few days of dissecting the trailer frame by frame, someone spotted it, a tiny image hidden in the bottom right corner of the ending screen. And guess what? It looked like a map snippet. Naturally, the community went into full detective mode. They put on their magnifying glasses and compared this mysterious map with the one they'd been building from the leaks. There were some similarities, especially with the layout of the right side and the presence of separate islands at the bottom, surrounded by water. But here's the catch. That image was pixelated to the max. It was like trying to figure out a puzzle with half the pieces missing. The lack of detail made it nearly impossible to confirm if it matched their map. This whole revelation sparked a heated debate among fans. Some folks started wondering if Rockstar deliberately threw this low-res map nugget to mess with their heads. Could it be that Rockstar is messing with the community, leading the GTA 6 mapping project into the wrong path? It's pretty odd for Rockstar to include this map as it was deliberately placed. When it comes to safeguarding the details of their upcoming games, Rockstar is notoriously tight-lipped. So when those leaks dropped in 2022, it really threw a spanner in the works for the company. It's kind of a deja vu situation, considering a similar thing happened back when GTA 5 was in the spotlight. I can't help but wonder if Rockstar did this deliberately, you know, as a deliberate move to shake things up and keep everyone guessing. But then again, we, the GTA fans, are pretty good at concocting theories out of thin air. Now, about that mysterious, highly detailed artwork nestled in the official wallpaper, that's what's really piqued my interest. It's like this odd piece that stands out from the rest, making me think it wasn't just randomly thrown in there. There's gotta be some intention behind it, right? The big question swirling around is whether it's a sly misdirection or a subtle clue for the savvy gamers. But honestly, we won't get any answers until the game hits the shelves, or maybe, if we're lucky, after another sneak peek in a new trailer. The GTA 6 mapping community dove headfirst into dissecting this artwork, but truth be told, there wasn't much to work with, so they've been sticking to the stuff they can actually confirm. Oh, and those maps floating around, especially the ones from IGN and PC Gamer? They're more like creative interpretations. Think of them as speculative mock-ups cooked up by the mapping community based on their hunches and educated guesses. There's a whole lot of imagination at play there, but none of it has received the official stamp of confirmation. The GTA 6 mapping project might not be dropping any bombshells about unknown locations in the game, especially considering how the gameplay leaks already spilled quite a bit on what's in store. Now the heart of this community effort lies in the finer details. They're all about pinning down the exact spots where these landmarks and locations are going to be placed within the game's vast world. However, let's be real here. They've barely scratched the surface, covering roughly just 10% of the entire map. Still, kudos to them for the tremendous effort and progress they've managed to make with what they have. What's confirmed, though, is that this map in GTA 6 is going to be an absolute beast, nearly double the size of the already sprawling map in GTA 5. They've made strides, particularly in fleshing out the Miami Beach region seen in the trailer, those gorgeous Venetian islands from the breathtaking aerial shot, and even narrowing down the location of Lucia's incarceration in the game. Looking ahead, this ongoing commitment over the coming years will gradually unveil more insights into what we can anticipate from the GTA 6 map. The anticipation is real, and it's fascinating to witness how this mapping endeavor will continue to shape our expectations for GTA 6. Looking at the timeline, it's pretty clear that both the completion of the project and the release of GTA 6 are still a considerable number of years down the road. But let me tell you, the dedication and hard work displayed by this community are nothing short of remarkable. Honestly, they deserve way more recognition for what they're doing. If you're keen on staying updated with the latest progress, or even lending a hand to this endeavor, I strongly recommend hopping onto the GTA 6 Mapping Community Discord. You'll find the link in the description below. These individuals have a monumental task ahead of them. But you know what? It's an incredibly intriguing project. Back in the days before GTA 5, I didn't even know something like this was happening behind the scenes. But now, 
As we patiently wait for 2025, every snippet of information or rumor about GTA 6 gets me all excited. And out of everything related to the game, I find the mapping community's tireless efforts the most captivating and commendable. A massive thank you to every single person contributing their time and effort to this project. I genuinely cannot wait to witness the final result of all their hard work.